Do you poop in your hand and log toss it in the toilet? Or do you in the drain and waffle stump it down? You are just horrible. You're even worse than those people who take dumps in the shower. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're diving back into r slash neck beard stories. Yes, indeed. Look who we got returning to the stage. That's right. It's Mr. Ramtide. He's out in the middle of nowhere once again. He had to give me his Reddit login information, and I posted this story up for him. It seems like we've got a new saga on our hands from our lovely lord and master, the eternal GM. I don't know if it's going to be tabletop related or just neckbeard related. <laughs> he did say that there were some spoilers in the text, and he trusted me not to spoil the story for myself. And of course I didn't, because that would ruin the visceral reaction that I have. And I know you guys are looking for the freshest, hottest, first reaction kind of take, so... That is what we are going to do today. I'm looking forward to it, as I do with most of these Ramtide stories. So let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some Neckbeard Stories cringe. Dishwasher Blues. Alley Cat Blues. <laughs> An offering for the Beard King Red X. Check him out on YouTube if you haven't already. Well, that's kind of, you know, <laughs> most people watching it on this channel have probably checked me out on YouTube already. But I appreciate it for the people in the uh, Neckbeard Story subreddit. Anywho, <laughs> Ram Tidings, dear friends. It is I, your dutiful lord and master, the eternal GM. Today, you'll find that this story perhaps deviates a good bit from the regular content that I bring you. It is nowhere near related to my shenanigans as a vagabond or the antics of any tabletop role-playing game. Among the ranks of societal dropouts, beards are most commonly found to be sure, but that is not the only niche in which they find themselves content to dwell. No, well, not this greasy little prick anyways. Let's not waste any further time on introductions, and we will get right into it. This one I have lovingly subtitled, Breaking the Ice with Poop Jokes. <laughs> yeah, this seems to work pretty good. You gauge where people's at. If they're like, oh, I don't like poop jokes, it's like, well, I guess we won't be pretty good friends, right? <laughs> Move it on. As a friendly reminder, there may be depictions or topics that are uncomfortable or even disgusting. Though the food may be savory, neckbeards most certainly are not. Feel free to change the programming if you find it getting a bit much for you. I won't begrudge you that. The stink of fryer grease clung to the occupants of the small kitchen like a weeb trying to hide his erection in a body pillow. <laughs> uh, already we paint in the picture. I love it. I smiled as I walked inside beaming around at the staring faces of several fat, greasy men. The biggest of them, a guy who went by the name of Charlie, smiled at me as I put out my hand for a shake, and I told him that I had heard that their small kitchen was hiring. I mentioned my experience, the date that I was available to start, and I gave them my contact information. He thanked me and informed me that if I were to be hired, I would hear back from the chef in a couple of days. Despite the vacuous and venomous stare of an oily, beady-eyed, balding little goblin behind one of the low boy stations, I enthusiastically thanked him and sent up a small prayer that my request for a job would be answered. Well, if it wasn't, I'm sure we wouldn't be telling this story, so good job, boy, moving on up in the world. He was just washing dishes in the last saga, now he's actually cooking food. They're trusting this guy around the food! <laughs> <laughs> nah, I know Ramtai cooks pretty good. I headed home that day. My job search concluded. It didn't take long before my phone was buzzing with a call, and I answered to hear from the proprietor of the establishment. Hell yeah. He interviewed me for a little bit, concluding our discussion with one rather serious question, upon which my employment seemed to hinge. How do you feel about Pantera? <laughs> 
<laughs> and Ramtide answered in the same way that I would. Pantera fucking rocks. <laughs> Sweet. We'll see you Monday. <laughs> Nicely done. I had found myself a comfy dish pit in which to make a living. And by the seeming of things, the people who I would be working with were just the type that I could get along with. That fat, balding little man staring back at my comparatively Chad-like visage, gnashing his teeth at the arrival of a person less beta than he, <laughs> haunted my thoughts only momentarily before I made my way to the fridge and cracked a beer. I settled into the couch and booted up some much-needed Skyrim. That's when Mount Fuji arrived at the house. I thanked him profusely for the tip-off on the restaurant gig, shouting gratitude above the shouting of Fujiro Da! <laughs> now I know I've gotten a couple of comments that uh, call me out for not shitting on Ramtide like I do some other OPs that toot their own horn. So I'm going to say that yes, comparatively, <laughs> this portly man-child is more Chad-like than the beard that we're talking about. But indeed, Ramtide is a portly man-child, don't get me wrong. Which just gives you some sort of idea about how bad this beard we're talking about might actually be. Anyways, when Monday rolled around, I idled away the morning hours until I had to go to work at the new gastropub whose dish pit I was destined to haunt. I laced up my shoes and took that half-mile stroll down the way to the tiny little den that had become, in recent memory, my place of employment. I smiled as I walked in, seeing that the faces occupying the building had changed up a little bit. A fat Mexican guy, who swore he was black, <laughs> was busy forming meat patties for the grill, besides a sporty, nerdy-looking girl, who eventually would rent me a room in her house. Charlie, the big fat sous chef, was dumping a cauldron of soup into a plastic container. Coming up from the back of the back of the house, autistic shouting shook the halls as a greasy little goblin came up, reminiscing about his days in high school. Ugh. <laughs> Nothing is sadder than a man who is still in his mid-30s, clinging to his high school days for some past glory that's long since been spent. Still, I was polite, and I greeted him. That really is a sad thing. If you want to make a person like that squirm, ask them what they've done since high school. <laughs> Tell me about some more recent things that have been going on with you. And he's like, ah, I was popular in high school. <laughs> okay, cool story, bro. Let's give our friend a name. I shall dub him Bluebeard. It is a spiritual and metaphorical blue, one that most certainly affects his balls as well. <laughs> Bluebeard was a tiny little person, easily a head and a half shorter than I. Thick rim spectacles were perched atop his bulbous red nose, through which he would stare lecherously at the waitresses in quiet desperation. Oh, one of those predator beards that uses uh, pity in order to get in close. Yep, I got this guy pegged already, I'll tell you that. He leaned into the low boy to either catch a better look or possibly to hide his boner. <laughs> his voice was nasal and high-pitched, and his frustrated sexual desires for those waitresses were perhaps only trumped by his frustrated sexual desires for the chef, Ooh, whom we shall eventually meet, but perhaps not today. A prominent bald spot gleamed atop the back of his head, with the brilliance of the fluorescent light bulbs that illuminated our small kitchen corridor. He waddled around with his belly sucked in and his chest puffed out, exuding as much big dick energy as he could humanly muster. And that energy could be precisely quantified at a staggering four inches. <laughs> hey! It's not the size of the, the bow, it's the motion of the ocean, all right? <laughs> Let's not start body shaming over here. Bluebeard, by virtue of his dull and admittedly lonely life, found himself with a predilection towards reminiscing on a decade long gone by. A more innocent time, where perhaps he wasn't so fat, maybe had his hair, maybe even had a girlfriend, God forbid. <laughs> I would soon find out that this poor guy had never mentally graduated from high school. 
Interesting. A suspended adolescent's beard. I think we've seen them before, but not called out in such a way. Also, that thing I said about body shaming is pretty silly because we do shame a lot of beards, but it's the beard on the inside that counts. We've seen skinny beards and fat beards. I make fun of all of them equally. <laughs> Oh, so you're the rookie, huh? Well, I hope Chef knows what he's doing hiring you. Don't disappoint us now. <laughs> How does one disappoint when washing dishes? Ah, shit, he's still washing dishes. <laughs> uh, everything I say is just wrong. You wash the dishes, you put them back on the shelf, you keep up with the flow of business, and you repeat ad nauseum until the evening is done with. It was a Monday night. It was bound to be a slow and boring night, but still I didn't press this painfully obvious point and I told him, yeah, <laughs> I'll do my best, resisting every inclination to roll my eyes at this peculiar humanoid before me. I found my station and got comfy for the evening, cleaning up the mess of dirty dishes made by prep pausing only to ask where things go, or to hit him with one of my traditional icebreaker questions. So, where are you from? What do you like to do for fun? What kind of music do you like? And when you poop in the shower... <laughs> God damn it. Uh, do you poop into your hand and, like, log toss it into the toilet? Or do you poop in the drain and just kind of, I don't know, waffle stomp it down? <laughs> Uh, yes, it is Ramtite's <laughs> go-to icebreaker question. To give you a sense of time, <laughs> this was a couple of years before I waffle stomped a poop in a truck stop shower. And if you don't know what's going on with that story, ask Red X. He'll tell you about it. The link for that is in the description as long as I remembered it. <laughs> I think I forgot uh, a link in the description and the comments really let me have it, so... I'm gonna try real hard to remember this one, okay? It was about the time that I was halfway through a furious debate with the back of house over the merits of whether log tossing or waffle stomping was the proper way to shower poop. <laughs> Here we go again. Uh, oh God. I for one believe that the waffle stomp is the proper way to dispose of shower turds for the record. You don't get poop on your hands, and there's no guarantee that your poop would even be solid enough anyways to survive the rigors of a log toss. <laughs> and what if your accuracy isn't that good? Anyways, <laughs> I digress. Uh, <laughs> I love this. When the front of house started to show up, the first two arrivals rolled their eyes as they walked past the furious debate raging in the back of the kitchen, probably assuming that we had all lost our collective minds, which... Admittedly, we probably had. <laughs> they went to the clock, punched in, and then proceeded to just ignore us, despite the pressing moral quandary which demanded an answer. The third arrival, however, gave pause on the threshold, as I vehemently declared that Bluebeard was absolutely wrong, and that log tossers were filthy animals who deserved nothing but shame and exile from civilized society. <laughs> Civilized waffle stomping society. <laughs> uh, uh, I missed you, Ramtide. I gotta say that, man. She needs a name, so we'll simply call her the waitress. Hey, it's like always sunny in Philadelphia, right? She was a tiny little thing, easily even shorter than Bluebeard, very attractive, and very flirtatious. I later found out that she was polyamorous. Read down to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I thoroughly pressed my luck like the rotten scoundrel that I am. Bright blue eyes poked out beneath her black and blue haired pixie cut. Oh, manic pixie dream girl coming on through. <laughs> we have yet to see this trope in a neckbeard story. She was dressed just the right amount of provocative. Enough to appear modest, but still get the tips flowing from the drunken bar patrons. She stood on the threshold to the kitchen with her mouth agape, wondering what the hell she had just walked into. <laughs> I had become animated by this most pressing argument and vehemently insisted on the righteous practice of waffle stomping <laughs> when she interjected. 
What the hell are you guys talking about? The waitress asked. I repeated my query to this new arrival with all the pomp and authority of a man who was in the right. <laughs> when you poop in the shower, do you poop in your hand and log toss it in the toilet? Or do you shit on the drain and waffle stomp it down? <laughs> Bluebeard here seems to think that log tossing is the way, the truth, and the light, but I am convinced that it is purely the province of only disgusting subhumans. <laughs> <laughs> she had the look on her face of a deer caught in the headlights as I pressed her for an answer. It took her a moment before the question finally processed, <laughs> and she burst into laughter before remarking that I was absolutely hilarious, brushing her hand against my arm. I don't know what to say about that. Chicks in the poop. What do you want? <laughs> Is she German? <laughs> I'm sorry to my German viewers. It's just uh, a thing. A thing that I heard about and I kind of can't unhear it. <laughs> she asked me my name and if I was the new dishwasher, to which I fostered both answers and got her name in kind. I was already winning brownie points just by virtue of being the usual incorrigible asshole that I was and nearly precipitating a riot in the back of the house on my very first day. <laughs> Out of the corner of my eye, I could see Bluebeard glowering a bit. He was very much entranced by this girl and the novelty of my recently established presence, the gravity of my humor, and the fact that I wasn't a devolving troglodyte like he was, had already granted me enough leverage to undermine his efforts to try and woo the waitress, his chosen milady. Now I will say that Ramtide does have quite a presence and uh, a great sense of humor as well. As far as the devolving troglodyte, <laughs> citation needed. <laughs> <laughs> but I love him though. Things eventually settled down, and the debate subsided, as Bluebeard no longer found the discussion we were having amusing, remarking several times that it was a stupid question. I mean, it was, <laughs> but that's not the point of asking it. And I was wasting everybody's time. Again, I was, but you gotta make friends one way or another, right? And then he snapped that we needed to get to work. He had soured rather quickly to me after the waitress arrived and instead accepted his condemnation to the loneliness of Karmaji without further discussion or acknowledgement of my presence. The shift passed in silence between us as we worked quite literally back to back, and every now and then I could feel the sting of his beady little glare whenever a lull in business granted him an opportunity to survey his surroundings. I don't know what Garmagy is or Karmagy. That's the Google auto-correct suggestion. Maybe some uh, line cooks or something out there can, can fill me in in the comments. My mood, however, was chipper. And as the night progressed, I made small chat with the waiters and the bussers as they brought in piles of dishes for me to wash. I gathered names and made introductions and cracked jokes and told little stories about myself and my vagabond days and all of those seedy adventures that I had had. And by the end of it, myself and the waitress were becoming quite friendly with great rapidity, despite the silent seething of Bluebeard behind me. When the time for the shift drinks came around, my favorite part of the night. <laughs> Damn, that's sweet. Perks of the job and shit. I got myself a good heady stout and settled in for the final push. The others in the kitchen had long since wrapped up for the evening and had begun to file out one by one and I wished them all a good night. They responded in kind, except for Bluebeard who had become quite miffed with me <laughs> and disappeared with a non-committal grunt <laughs> into the evening. Left alone in the back, I finished cleaning up the kitchen and made my way outside into the cool night air. After being cramped in the kitchen all evening, the air felt really damn good on my damp clothes and broke the heat of the shift with ease. I started my half a mile walk home, enjoying the ambience of the evening and a crumpled cigarette. When I got home, I showered, changed, and grabbed myself another beer, sitting alone in the dark of the living room with my feet up off the ground before just falling asleep. The night passed restlessly as I dreamt. I was in the back of the kitchen and all the usual faces were there. 
Jeremy, the Mexican grill cook who swore he was black, <laughs> again. Charlie's fat ass waddling around the kitchen, blocking everyone from doing their job. Erica, the sporty nerd girl with an obsession for Korean culture. Korea boo. <laughs> but someone was strangely absent. Fear and confusion gripped at my heart. I turned my head to hear sinister laughing coming from the backest of the back of the house, punctuated by a loud, wet fart. <laughs> and as I rounded the corner to determine the source of this disturbance, Bluebeard stood there, growing in size to encompass the entirety of the storage room. <laughs> a dripping, corn-stuffed turd clutched in his left hand. <laughs> Uh, as he derisively mocked me with his guffaws, and in the other, the fairest of the fair, the lovely waitress, screaming to go free at once. He paused for a moment to remark that my lady doth protest too much, before I demanded that he unhand her at once. He sneered at me as I stood my ground, clutching the waffle iron that had materialized in my hands like a culinary Excalibur and he spat excrement as he proclaimed, Make me! With a vigorous, Huzzah! <laughs> I charged the amorphous beast, deftly dodging the fecal projectile that splattered against the wall, and I swung my waffly mace, leaving the fine printing of a square pattern against his head with each blow that I dealt. The beast, Reed! In pain, and eventually succumbed to my berserker onslaught, wherein, with my final blow, I planted the waffle iron into its skull and delivered a solid stomp, shattering its cranium into a puddle of viscera. Wow, I never see blood in my dreams. <laughs> Are you going all white knight on me, Ramtide? Are you getting fucking googly eyes for this waitress who did nothing but touch your goddamn arm? Ugh. If there's one thing that I could say about Ramtide, it's that he needs a lady. Is anybody out there looking to date a portly red-headed man-child? <laughs> Hit him up on the Discord, hell yeah. Bluebeard dissolved into a bubbling pile of blood and shit <laughs> as the will to fight and the ability to live fled his broken body. I extended my hand then to the waitress in triumph, pulling her loose from the grasp of Bluebeard to the cheers and shouts of the rest of the kitchen staff, grabbed her firmly by the shoulders, and pulled her in for a cinematic-style kiss with entirely too much tongue. <laughs> God, uh, that's good cringe. <laughs> As the closing credits begin to roll, and the symphony crescendoed with Ramtide's theme. You got a theme song now, too? What the fuck is going on here? I don't even have a theme song. <laughs> a quick montage flashed rapidly, like the muzzle of a machine gun in the dark, showing that Charlie had lost 50 pounds, Erica learned to speak a dialect of Korean that sounded just like my Japanese animes, and Jeremy finally admitted that he was, in fact, not black. <laughs> Poor Jeremy. Leave Jeremy alone, man. If that's how he feels most comfortable in his skin, <laughs> fuck it, whatever. The camera panned out and faded to black as the cheers turned into... Maybe we should leave him alone. <laughs> as heavy breathing and zippers coming undone overtook the soundtrack. I awoke with a start from my dreams to find myself back in my living room. The house had long since woken up, and TJ and Fuji sat in the kitchen quietly playing magic and drinking coffee and probably trying to ignore Ramtide's <laughs> fucking morning wood. <laughs> uh, I staggered up from the couch and made my way over to where they sat, pouring myself a cup of that morning brew. Fuji inquired how my first day was, and I told him it was good. I had made friends, and I had even made an enemy. Mount Fuji, <laughs> I'd expect no less from you. Who is it? Ramtide. His name's Bluebeard. He's an ugly little manlet who's mad that I made his girlfriend laugh. Mount Fuji, Tch, he'll get over it. I joined in for a few games of magic with the boys to whittle away the morning hours before duty once again called, begrudgingly parting ways from the kitchen table where my friends continued to enjoy themselves. 
I threw on some more appropriate clothes for work, laced my shoes, and stepped out the door. Kurt McGurk's radio blared some obnoxious lo-fi indie trash into the driveway. <laughs> As I left my abode and headed down that lonesome half mile, enjoying my pre-work cigarette. It was still very early when I got to the restaurant. I've always been very compulsive about time, and I had about a half an hour to kill, so I debated how I would whittle it away. I decided to get some lunch before heading into the den and headed to the Chinese shop next door to get a fat plate of General Howe's chicken. Please, someone tell the general I said that his chicken was amazing. <laughs> Can't argue with that. God damn. Cigarette and some delicious sugar chicken. <laughs> I'm into that for reals. But much like Ramtide, I have no idea how to reach him. With my food in hand, I took a seat out on one of the patio tables and ate my meal as I watched a couple of videos on my phone. No, it was not Red X, as this channel did not exist at this time. <laughs> it was but a twinkling in Dayton's eye. <laughs> <laughs> a dilapidated Subaru pulled into the parking lot as I enjoyed my meal, and I looked up from my screen to see that the waitress herself had arrived. She got out of her car and grabbed a couple of her belongings before starting towards the restaurant, wherein I sat on the patio. I waved to her as she approached and asked her how her day was going, to which she replied with all the usual requisite cordiality. It was still early, and I didn't have to clock in yet, so I asked her if she was early and perhaps might care to join me a bit before I had to go in, if, of course, she wasn't in a rush. She pulled out the chair beside me and grabbed a seat, and we shot the shit and huddled around my cell phone screen watching funnies to whittle away what time we had left before going into the den. It was that time when I heard the side gate of the building open. Oh, I only guess who that is. Also, what was you watching on the phone? I bet it was Salad Fingers. We all know that Ramtide fucking loves Salad Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Bluebeard shows up. Hi, waitress. <laughs> How are... He trailed off, seeing me sitting there at the patio giggling at some stupid funny with his supposed lady love. We both looked up to observe Bluebeard standing there with a trash bag in his hand, on the way out to the dumpster, oscillating between the joy of seeing his lady love and his malice at seeing me, and his brain was threatening to just stroke him out. <laughs> it was about then that I noticed something about Bluebeard was very much different today. His beard was actually blue. <laughs> oh no. He wants to make a connection. He's like, what, what kind of hair dye do you use, waitress? This dude will try any fucking thing to get his foot into the door. <laughs> and none of it will work. I cannot tell you what possesses a man to dye his beard blue. I, however, can offer my most insightful psychological analysis on the matter. Bluebeard felt threatened. A strange new man had moved into his territory and within moments began making strides towards building a friendship with the person upon whom he possessed a crippling crush. Somewhere, perhaps in a mad stroke of genius, he concluded that if he were to, in some likely event, gain her affections and attraction, he then needed to overshadow my own charisma. If it was my unpredictability and novelty that was of such interest, and maybe he just needed to be more unpredictable and novel. <laughs> he needed to drive a wedge to prove that he was the alpha male and I was the beta. He needed some display that he could use to prove that he was more punk rock than the freight train riding, waffle stomping, advocating, face tattoo having, gutter dwelling, I'll fight, I'll fight you right now, punk that had just walked into his life. And what better way to say all of that than dyeing your beard blue? <laughs> okay, sure. Why not? And the piece de resistance is that Ramtide's beard is fucking red. <laughs> it's like red versus blue unfolding before us. Indeed, it was a sight to behold. Splotchy patches of blue hair dye clung to the flushed red skin 
beneath his formerly ginger beard. Oh, you guys are both gingers. That's why it's such a big clash. You know these gingers? <laughs> they always got a power struggle going on for like who's the most ginger. <laughs> I don't think any of that's true. The loud color contrast made him look like a haphazard blend of cherry and blue raspberry slurpee atop a jealous little cup. <laughs> the waitress. Uh, hi, Bluebeard. I could feel the genuine confusion in this simple statement that really felt more like a question. The unspoken question of, why the hell did you do that? <laughs> Hung in the air like a rain cloud, ready to dump its contents in a furious and unrelenting torrent. I did not speak, instead savoring the peculiar silence that now held the small patio and parking lot in its enchanting spell. That's right, just let it hang there like the bad fart that it is. <laughs> Soak it in, Bluebeard. Oh, <laughs> uh, hi, waitress. I'm doing really good. The silence only lingered, however, and Bluebeard felt compelled to explain his situation. <laughs> That's the best. If you want people to continue talking, just don't say anything, and then they feel the need to fill in the silence. Police interrogators do it all the time. Bluebeard, I thought I'd take a walk on the wild side the other night. <laughs> and I thought it'd be funny to dye my beard. <laughs> Man, you never know what I'm going to do next. Uh, reminisce about high school, probably? <laughs> God damn. The Shade. I haven't heard him reminisce about high school at all, but... That's probably because Ramtide realized what every single one of his fucking stories were about and managed to just tune it out <laughs> from that point. Uh, the lengths that some people will go to never ceases to astound me when they feel that they've been overlooked. Like a small child that's never received enough attention, eventually any attention, whether good or bad, will suffice for the one who has been so deprived. Most assuredly, as the day wore on, much attention to his beard was received, but not from the waitress, the target of his affections. Many a walk-in discussion was had about the psychological integrity of the Garmory and what would possess a man to dye his fucking facial hair blue. <laughs> Despite the color being entirely wrong, red flags were certainly being hoisted to the top of their poles. Oh, look, it's a bunch of red flags sewn into the shape of a person. <laughs> Throughout the night, Bluebeard reveled in the attention, for better or for worse, that was being given to him as a result of his zany lol so random beard dying. Every now and then, I would find him casting triumphant glances at me from across the kitchen as he basked in what he assumed was the limelight. They screamed, jumping freight trains, <laughs> seeing every state in the Union, hitchhiking thousands of miles, drunken fist fights, evading the law, and experiencing all that craziness that your life must have unveiled to you is so boring. My beard is blue. <laughs> and that is infinitely more interesting than anything you've ever experienced. Yeah, if it helps you sleep at night, <laughs> sure. Whatever. <laughs> uh, I'd like to contest anything that Ramtide said while tooting his own horn, but it's all true. <laughs> He's an interesting fucking guy. You can't fight against it. You just have to embrace it. Plenty of people come by the Discord specifically to talk with Ramtide, and I have no ill will towards that. <laughs> he is a fucking cool dude. But maybe I can divert attention away from him if I dye my beard. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not that sad. Eventually, the shift came to a close, and as I sat nursing another delicious beer over the dish pit, I watched the long procession of line cooks filing out for the night. I wished them a good evening, one by one, as they disappeared from the restaurant. The last to leave, again, was Bluebeard. And as I told him good night, he actually fostered me a civil reply, like a puppy. Happy to be noticed by its owners after years of neglect, he seemed chipper as he walked out that evening. My curiosity surged, wondering for just how long he would try and milk this 
particular action of his for notoriety, well, time would most certainly tell. I finished cleaning up and putting everything away, and I punched out for the evening, wishing the few remaining front of house staff well, and told him that I'd see him next week. My position as of the moment was very part-time, only a couple days a week, but that would eventually change. I stepped out into the cool night air, and once more took that lonesome walk back on home. Imbibing the cold night air and the burning nicotine-infused ash deep into my soul, I arrived home, past Kurt's open doorway wherein he was busy furtively disassembling a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> oh, meth is a hell of a drug. <laughs> and went into my house. Time seemed to have stood still in that apartment, because as I entered, Mount Fuji and TJ were still sitting in the kitchen, you guessed it, playing magic. I went over to look and observed a couple of turns, and made my comments as they played before interjecting. Ramtide, so, uh, Fuji. Mount Fuji, yo. Ramtide, Bluebeard dyed his beard blue. <laughs> Mount Fuji, what? Why? Ramtide, I don't know, man. I think it's a cry for help. Mount Fuji, are you gonna help him? Ramtide, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> the coming week was long and boring. I spent the time enjoying my life, heading out to the square in the evenings to do some much-needed busking, and wasting the days away in front of the screen becoming the dragonborn of legend. When I would sleep at night, however, my dreams were haunted by the beady-eyed effigy of Bluebeard, desperately vying with me for the hand of the waitress. Somewhere deep within my soul, a call to action had been sounded, and it demanded that it must be answered. Even if just for one night, I was now determined that I would, I must, plow the waitress. <laughs> Only the highest aspirations around here. <laughs> and I would then revel in the glory of Bluebeard's butt hurt. <laughs> so fucking ridiculous, dude. Ah, limitless love goes out to Red X and the greater Red X community. I absolutely love and adore all of you guys. Special thanks also goes out to my patrons, Calvicus, Nat1, Nick, Dayton Does, hey, that's me, Fire Drake, DigiNZ, and Tato Ferret. Thank you guys for your love and support as we make our way through this curious adventure known as life. Oh, Ramtide, Ramtide, Ramtide. Always on the lookout for love, or at least some sort of approximation thereof. <laughs> But, you know, you get off a couple months on the road and it's just like stepping off a ship in the Navy after you've been underway for a couple months. <laughs> it's just like, you don't know who you are or what the fuck you're doing, but you know exactly what you need. Head to the nearest bar. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> it seems to me like this waitress is playing both of you guys like a fiddle. Maybe she doesn't mean anything by it. Maybe she's caught up in this love triangle that she's not even fucking aware of, but <laughs> it is so absolutely ridiculous to have two boys chasing her around and to take it so personally and to make a competition out of it. It's like, dude, just find somebody who's not contested. And I'm talking to Bluebeard and Ramtide at this point. <laughs> it ain't worth stepping into this shit trying to bed down this chick who very well might be attractive, but there's just too much other stuff going on there. I wouldn't bother with it, honestly, but hey, that's just me. <laughs> I know Ramtide could do him, and being the wily boy that Ramtide is, I'm sure I know how this story ends, we are going to have a, a love scene. <laughs> or maybe it's not a love scene, maybe it's a fuck scene, I don't know. <laughs> Just a vengeful, hate-filled screw session. And I'm completely down for that as well. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing how the story devolves. I wondered how, without the might of my natural pheromones, I would seduce the waitress. Those pheromones were highly concentrated. Bluebeard, part two. The Invitation. Well, thank you for extending the invitation to all of us. <laughs> Another offering for our Lord Red X. Praise be his name, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> uh, 
Don't blow it up too much, my head's gonna get big. Ram tidings, dear friends. It is I, your dutiful lord and master, the eternal DM. Where last we parted ways, we begin to delve into the tale of Bluebeard, a balding little manlit co-worker of mine with an insatiable lust for the lovely waitress, the object of his desires. Is his name Charlie Kelly <laughs> by chance? <laughs> uh, however, his butt hurt grew massively when the dashing rogue that I am arrived on the scene and began rapidly earning brownie points. Bluebeard, however, was not one to be so easily outdone and had decided to embrace his inner wild child <laughs> in an effort to compete with yours truly. It's more like his inner Papa Smurf or something like that. He was unaware that he would have been better off playing to what strengths he had. Myself, spurred on by the endless amount of butt hurt emanating from this beard, decided that my crowning achievement must be realized. I must bang the waitress <laughs> and revel in the endless stream of tears surely bound to follow. It's all in good fun, you know? <laughs> Is it, though? <laughs> uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, and so, without further introduction, let us dive into this tale, lovingly subtitled, Beer Pressure. A hey, not up to speed? Red X can fill you in. He has a riveting narration of the story so far at the following link. Yeah, buddy! With the real link and everything. High five. It goes without saying that neckbeards are revolting creatures, deserving of nothing but scorn. Disturbing descriptions or terrible topics may arise. You have been warned twice now, and I'll even warn you a third time. Don't feel bad turning off the video if it gets to be a little bit much. I disagree that neckbeards are deserving of nothing but scorn. I do have a big heart, you know? We had Boogerbeard yesterday, and I don't think he was the true villain of the story. Although, I have to admit that a lot of the time, <laughs> I do love to hate him. But I try to judge on an individual basis. Anyways, it didn't take long for the stink of kitchen grease to overpower every natural flavor that I could exude. Thusly handicapped... I wondered how, without the might of my natural pheromones, <laughs> I would seduce the waitress as I vigorously scrubbed my hands, trying to purge the stench from my skin. <sighs> I was doomed. Without my pungent aroma, the waitress would never notice me now. <laughs> I let out a lamenting wail in the shower as the bar of soap turned over within my hands. The stink of fryer oil is never so easily defeated. Even after a handful of days of exposure, it had basically encompassed my entire being. All kitchen crew problems. <laughs> that sounds rough, I will say. My nerves were shot. I was about to be bested. My amorous ambitions were being torn asunder before my very eyes as I sniffed again at my palms wondering why it couldn't even smell delicious like french fries. No, just oil. Oil, oil everywhere, and it stank like shit. <laughs> you remember that rhyme? That little nursery rhyme from when you were a kid or something? <laughs> and to make matters worse, that loathsome bluebeard, that abyssal fiend, my arch nemesis, my sworn blood enemy from Tales of Yore had gone so far as to literally dye his beard blue in a flagrant display of his conviction and passion. Oh yeah, how can you fight back against hair dye? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Ramtide's gonna plot a plan, as he always does. And he is a very vindictive person. He's definitely the yin to my yang, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like the lighthearted kind of funny guy, and he's like the angry, full of rage, still pretty funny guy. <laughs> I was shaking in my combat boots, knowing full well that the pheromone reducing effects of grease would only amplify as time went on. My natural defenses were bested, and I needed to ply for other means with which to woo Milady's hand. <laughs> Ramtide showing his true neckbeard colors in this intro. <laughs> I exited the shower, and I opened the closet wherein I kept my clothes and looked inside, 
seeking something, anything that might augment my waning natural capacity to induce animalistic lust in my mate by way of smell alone. Hmm, a fedora, a trench coat, fingerless gloves, shorts and boots, a Japanese katana folded 10,000 times over that I bought from the sword shop at the mini mall. <laughs> All right, now I know you're fucking with me. This is all sarcastic. It can't be real. My suspension of disbelief was holding, but the katana was too mighty. Sliced it in twain. None of this was good enough, and the clock was wasting away as time spiraled ever closer to my return to that cursed kitchen. The specter of defeat loomed above me like an animated, half-sentient blob of cholesterol coated in a five o'clock shadow. Ugh, what to do, what to do? I glanced at the time. I had to leave for work momentarily, and here I was, disarmed and unprepared to face the day ahead. I cursed under my breath, before a fleeting moment of clarity returned to me. Ramtide, I told myself. You don't need pheromones or katanas to seduce this girl. You're Ramtide, bro. Everybody likes you without you even trying. You're the most charismatic drifter man ever to grace this planet. <laughs> uh, are you really going to let some twit with a dye-stained face get you riled up like that? Of course not. And again, if it was any other OP, I'd poke that balloon and be like, <laughs> you're not that charismatic. Nobody is. But honestly, I don't know, man. <laughs> you either love Ramtide or you love to hate him. You get strong feelings one way or the other. That's what I'll say. And to be honest, I never actually did let Bluebeard get me all riled up. The morning had passed like any other, and I derped around in the garden for a bit before playing Skyrim all morning long. I only got up off of my fat ass to get to work. Your portly ass. <laughs> I arrived early as usual and enjoyed my pre-shift nicotine fix before heading inside. When I passed the threshold, I looked around to see who I was working with tonight. Some familiar faces looked up at me from their workstation. Jeremy was on grill as usual, shouting in Mexican abonics, <laughs> and Erica stood next to him that usual bored and disconnected look on her face as she listened to Jeremy attempting to rap for what must have been like the second time in his life. <laughs> Respect for trying at the very least. I rounded the corner to find Bluebeard, his beard now completely shaven off, but his face still slightly splotchy. Bro, he only stuck with it for a day? Sad. <laughs> He was engaged in conversation with a rather tall and heavily tattooed individual whom I had never met before. I walked up to them and said, hello, shouting over the 90s pop punk that was blaring from the speakers. Aw, oh, 90s pop punk. <laughs> My guiltiest pleasure. Ramtide? Hey, dude, I'm Ramtide. Who are you? Chef? I'm Chef! Ramtide? Hey, Chef. <laughs> Hello, children. How's it going? Bad. Why bad? <laughs> uh, it's a South Park bit. No? Okay, never mind. I <laughs> shook the man's hand and thanked him for giving me a job, mentioning that I looked forward to working with him. He, however, cut me short with a most pressing matter. Chef. So I heard you like Pantera. <laughs> a fucking man, brother. We got into it for a moment and started gushing about metal at each other, talking about bands, guitars, concerts, and the like. All the while, Bluebeard dwelt on the sidelines, unsure of how to chime in, trying to wedge his way back into everyone's consciousness. It was about the time that I said, turn this garbage off and put on some real music, bro, that Bluebeard decided to slink back to his station, casting longing and mournful glances back at Chef as we spurged out about music for a bit. Aw, oh, poor Bluebeard. He just wants to be wanted, but doesn't really know where he fits. I kind of get that, but also, he's trying way too hard. <laughs> Time flies quick, however, and I soon found myself preparing to clock in. Chef headed up to the front window to expedite orders as they were received, seeing them off to their proper tables and 
quality controlling the plates as they were finished, and I went to settle in at my station, cleaning the already mounting pile from the day's prep work. I was halfway through clearing my sink when I found myself shoved against the edge of the sink, and I turned to see Bluebeard shuffling his way past, wherein he nonchalantly remarked, Hey, sorry, bro. No worries, I replied, mentioning that perhaps next time he ought to be a little more careful. The kitchen is a dangerous place, you know? It'd be a shame to watch someone fall into a working fryer or a pile of knives. <laughs> Subtle. <laughs> Bluebeard said nothing and proceeded about his business, running plates towards the front of the house. I resumed scrubbing, paying no mind, when about 30 minutes later, a second impact brushed me up against the sink. See, I was going to say something about the first impact and you threatening him, and that's a little bit overboard. <laughs> we probably should have waited for the second impact to establish a pattern, and then you can start threatening people. You know what I mean? Everybody gets one. <laughs> that's my philosophy. Ramtide, bro. Bluebeard, what? Ramtide, I'm beginning to think that you're trying to fuck with me. Bluebeard, what? No, man. <laughs> why would I fuck with you? Ramtide, why would you fuck with me? Ramtide, yeah, why would you fuck with me? Bluebeard, man, this is just like that one time in high school where this girl accused me of getting handsy with her for no reason. And blah, 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 blah. Another high school story tuned out promptly. <laughs> I didn't reply, instead seizing a stack of clean dishes which I ran up to the grill station. When I returned, I once more resumed the most pressing task at hand of scrubbing cutlery. With my face down in the sink, I was admittedly unable to watch my back, but I did my best to keep an eye scanning for the third impact that I knew was yet to come. Almost an hour passed before Bluebeard banged into me once more. The deliberate intent behind it was becoming undeniable. Three times in one night had he tried to body slam me into the sink. He didn't like me and he wanted to make me miserable. How rude. <laughs> this time, I didn't confront him. I didn't bring it up to anyone. I took my licks in stride while the hamster wheel in my brain started turning. Turning slowly, but most assuredly in <laughs> turning. <laughs> uh, if he wanted to play, then I could play too. But how could I settle the score if I couldn't even see his impending advance? Surely there was something that I could do. My eyes scanned my station, looking for anything which I could use to put an end to this. And quickly, I locked eyes with a kitchen knife. Bro, <laughs> do not. <laughs> I could just stab him and never have to deal with him again. But yeah, that's way too extreme, and you would most definitely end up in a jail cell. A frying pan? What, knock him out? Eh, still too extreme. Break a glass over his head? Tempting, but again, yeah, too extreme. My options were limited, and the only thing that fostered any options was the bottle of dish soap beneath the dishwasher, which was precariously low, and needed to be changed anyways. Yes, indeed. We gonna make a little slip and slide, I do think. <laughs> I ran into the back of the house and scanned the inventory shelves for a replacement container of dish liquid. And upon finding an unopened bottle, proceeded back to my station with my cargo in tow. I clambered down onto all fours beneath the sink, undid the connection, and replaced the bottle. With this whole process, I took my time. My eye trained upon the garmagee across the walkway from me. He was furiously assembling some plates for a large party and had no time to pay attention to what it was that I was doing. Excellent. <laughs> With the near empty container of dish soap now free, I poured some onto the tile right behind my station. Oh god, it's so good. I mean, the dude could crack his head and stuff, but... I stopped feeling bad for him once I uh, remembered what he was like and who he is. <laughs> just throwing his weight around, and he probably does get sympathy from just being a pathetic little worm. Well, it ain't gonna work in this case. Ramtide's revenge? It could be the perfect crime. 
You could never tell as chaos continued to devour the kitchen. The amount of business that we were having that night was just insane. And the chunks of food and debris and slop were just strewn everywhere. It would be a late night cleaning up for me, to say the very least. However, all those scraps served to camouflage the trap that I had laid. <laughs> I returned to my sink, whistling to myself an old song about trains as I scrubbed clean a series of plates that had just come in. When I saw, from the corner of my eye, the Garmagee leaving his station with an armful of food. He was making an unnecessary beeline much closer to me than he needed to pass. I braced for impact. <laughs> he didn't quite make it that far, though. A soggy piece of lettuce slid away beneath his foot, bringing the rubber sole of his sneakers into contact with the slick, soapy tile, and his legs shot out from beneath him, <laughs> casting him to the floor flat on his ass and covering him in food. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know what's going to happen. You see it coming down the track about a mile away, but <laughs> it's certainly satisfying. Now I get to revel in the aftermath. There was a moment of silence, and then shouts erupted from the back of the house in unison, asking whether he was okay. I had turned around myself and hovered over him. <laughs> he was covered in an eight tops worth of food, bright red and clearly embarrassed. The chef yelled from the front, demanding to know where his orders were, wherein Bluebeard humbly responded, that if you hit the floor, and he'd have to remake them, recounting the disastrous accident and the slick floor that resulted in the loss of all those plates. I gotta feel at least a little bad for the owner, because yeah, he lost eight plates worth of profit. <laughs> Has to pay for all this food that's going in the trash because of some revenge scheme. But uh, I don't know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes, what do you want? I chimed in, chipper as ever, that I'd clean up the floor right quick so that wouldn't happen again for some sweet, easy brownie points. <laughs> he did not zero in on my position again for the rest of the night. Every so often I'd turn around and watch him as he worked, and I could tell that he could sense my eyes upon him, the way that he prickled like a blue quilled porcupine. <laughs> for a while we hid a lull in business and just stared at each other face to face across that narrow kitchen walkway. I smiled, he scowled, red versus blue. <laughs> That's what I called it in the last episode. Beautiful. The night finished without further incident, and people began to leave. On the way out, as I sipped my beer over the dish pit, I nodded at Bluebeard as he passed me in silence. I motioned for him to stop and come talk with me for a minute. I was ready to offer an olive branch because at the end of the day, despite how much it would amuse me to fan the flames of a rivalry, I really just wanted to make my money and live in peace. But rather than oblige my request, he hurriedly muttered about how he had to leave and flew from the kitchen like a bat out of hell. It's a shame, and it also isn't, because I wonder if perhaps he had taken that opportunity to reconcile with me if... We would have both been spared much headache and heartache. However, these memoirs would be cut so much shorter. <laughs> Count your blessings where they can be found, I do suppose. I often find that reconciliation doesn't go too far. <laughs> Especially if you're still trying to take a run at the waitress even when you're supposedly reconciled. You know what I mean? He's never going to get over that. The whole thing's a wash. Don't even bother with reconciliation as far as I'm concerned. Chef was the last one out that night, and as he passed me by, he paused to talk to me. Chef, Hey, so, we have a few holidays where we close shop for and don't actually work. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, New Year's Day, but we also do 4th of July, and that's right around the corner. We usually have a group outing, and if you want to come, you're more than welcome, you know. You're part of the crew now, so the invitation is open. I love meeting new people, but I absolutely hate hanging out. <laughs> Still, you've got to save face when people are being nice to you. Fucking social contract. 
I totally get that one. Probably one of the reasons me and Ramtide bonded so quickly, honestly. Ramtide, that actually sounds like a pretty good time, man. I might have to check that out. God knows I never have anything else planned. Chef, so I guess we'll see you there then. A bunch of us usually go up to the National Forest and bring some beers and whatnot and camp out for the night, get tossed, have a cookout. Like I said, you're welcome to come. Anyways, I have to get home. Good job tonight, Ramtide. I'll see you tomorrow. Ramtide, bye, Chef. Chef left me alone there in the kitchen as I pushed the mop across the floor. Eventually, I too finished up the job at hand and headed back to the punch clock. June was coming to a close, and the summer heat was beginning to get oppressive, even at night. I slid in my time card and then headed out to the front door. It's not every day I get invited to things, and it's even less frequent that I actually seize upon those invitations. I'm a very reclusive individual by nature. After an hour of just about anybody, I've usually honestly had enough of them for an entire lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> God, it's like he's writing my thoughts. A party in the woods with a bunch of people that I just met did sound like a good time in theory, but I already knew my own personal proclivities, and being social was never one of them. When I got home that night, I made an oath to myself that I would indeed not be going, <laughs> and I would rather just sit in alone and listen to the fireworks while everyone else had a good time. My nightly ceremony of a shower and a beer passed in all its sanctity before I dozed off once more. Yeah, I could tell just from the way that Ramtide responded that he's not going to go, oh yeah, I might check it out. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> that is not positive language. But it is probably better than responding with like, wow, that sounds terrible. I'd probably lie and be like, oh, I have other plans. <laughs> My initially burning desire to plow the waitress to spite Bluebeard seemed to be mostly a passing phase. Good boy. This happens to me all the time. <laughs> I meet someone new or try a new hobby and I am absolutely sold by it for about a week and then I never care about it ever again. My neural circuits run hot and cold and they're basically fried from years of drug abuse and head injuries and neural overload from trauma. Good feels just don't hit me like they used to, let alone linger for very long. My dreams had changed, no longer entertaining the grandiose delusions of me slaying the foul bearded beasts and winning the manic pixie girl's affections. Bro, I called her that too. I know Ramtide's listening to these videos, but it's just cool to see it translated back into the story. Ah, much love. Instead, I was just back in the kitchen, washing dishes in my sleep, Chained to my station, even in unconsciousness. Oh, purgatory. <laughs> Nobody was there except for me and the continuously mounting pile of dishes, each one bearing the scowling image of my very own face. Upon waking, I asked myself if I actually wanted to put in the effort of socializing with someone to the point of banging them just for something as petty as spite. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm certainly not above it, but if the truth must be told, all I've ever really wanted is to be left alone. <laughs> uh, oh man, people come with requirements and desires and motivations all of their own and a bunch of needs that they want met, and I have no desire to wade through that tangled mess of human interaction like 99.9% .9 of the time. I had finally found a sanctuary of my own, where I could hide away from the world at long last, surrounded with people whose presences I could somehow miraculously stomach. Why would I step outside of it just because it's America Day? Don't you love America, bro? I mean, we're not number one anymore, <laughs> but we're still in like the top 200 of countries, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I woke up. Reminded that all animalistic compulsions for petty hazing and fornication aside, I actually do, indeed, want nothing to do with anyone. I had overslept that following day and found myself awakening to a solitary house with little time to spare before I had to return to work once more. Haphazardly, I got dressed, passed 
Kurt's den of shattered drywall just next door, and I made my way back to the shop, stopping only for a quick gas station coffee to try and pull myself together. Familiar faces stared back at me, remarking that I was later than usual, albeit still early, as I dodged between cutlery and cooking pans on my way to the time clock. Finally, I settled in at my station and got to work. Chef was not in attendance, leaving Charlie overseeing the day's operations instead. I hadn't seen him for a couple of days, and so we chatted a bit, just catching up, when I mentioned that Chef had invited me to their little 4th of July get-together. Charlie hopped right on board that train and decided to extend the invitation to me as well. Ramtide, bro, I appreciate it, but I don't really know if I want to deal with that many people, man. I told Chef that I might go, but honestly, I'd rather just hang out and cook at home and be perfectly 100% comfy. Hell yeah, home life. Hell yeah, comfy life. <laughs> That's what I'm about. Bluebeard, of course, took this opportunity to interject. Bluebeard, yeah, you should stay at home. <laughs> I doubt you'd appreciate a good party like Chef throws anyways. Last year's party was so awesome. It reminds me of this one party that I went to at high school. <laughs> <laughs> I think you mean THE one party that you went to in high school. <laughs> I got so drunk that I threw up in my friend's sink, and, and then his parents came home, and they were so mad that everyone was there, so... <laughs> yes, yes, do go on about being a drunk teenager. How fascinating. <laughs> I quickly dialed him out, as usual, and turned my attentions back to Charlie. Charlie? Well, you should consider it anyway, man. Just about everyone's gonna be there. The kitchen always goes, and a lot of the front of the house, too. It's gonna be a good time. Don't be such a shut-in, mate. Mate? I didn't pick that up. Charlie's a uh, Aussie or British? What's going on here? Do I gotta change the voice? I'm not gonna change the voice. Ramtide. <laughs> No promises, Charlie. Like I said, I've never really been big on get-togethers. Bluebeard snickered under his breath, remarking, How much of a loser I was for not wanting to go to a company party. <sighs> Don't those two words always look funny when put together? <laughs> I think so, and I definitely agree. No good can come of a fucking company party. Yeah, sure, let's blur the boundaries between work and home. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, you pay me to be here, I'm not doing it on my own time. I paid him no mind and just got to work. The shift flew by pretty rapidly. The night wasn't as busy as the previous evening, but quick enough to where time just melted off the clock. Before I knew it, I was taking my break. I decided to sidle up towards the front of the house to take a quick peek at just how chaotic my station would be when I returned. Things were slowing down, and I grabbed a seat at the bar for a little bit, chatting it up with the bartender. I strong-armed him into an extra drink, which I greedily drank before he started to strong-arm me back. <laughs> he happened to be rather excited for the coming excursion. Everyone did, for the most part, and it was the forefront topic of conversation that evening. The bartender, too, decided to try and pressure the immovable stone that I was into caving and going, but I held firm in my resolute position. A voice behind me interrupted my protests. The waitress, What? Why aren't you gonna go? Come hang out with us, Ramtide. Ramtide, dude, it's too many people. I hate crowds of people, even if I know them. Like, I know I'm up here just sitting with you guys at this bar, but... Looking at all the people in the restaurant practically drives me to go hide in the walk-in. It's just too much. Why do you think I'm back of house? By choice? I know where I belong. I'm not good at kissing people's asses or making small talk, so yeah, I think I'm just gonna stay home. I feel it so hard. The social anxiety ain't just real, it's fucking really real. <laughs> the waitress continues pressing. You're missing out. I promise, it's a lot of fun. Last year, Bluebeard got completely shithoused and started bitching about how it was just like high school. Uh, nobody here understands me. 
And then he got up to run away while he was crying and almost fell into the fire pit. Ah, he still hasn't lived it down. <laughs> Ramside, okay. I would have loved to see that, but I really just don't want to go. The waitress, sure you do. Look, you're coming. Everyone else is going. You should step outside of your comfort zone more often. Ramtide, I just got into a comfort zone for the first time in years. <laughs> Honestly, this is about the time where I buck really hard and I'm like, you don't tell me what I'm going to fucking do. And she's like, well, <laughs> I don't even want to be friends with him anymore. But if I'm reading the situation correctly, then yeah, Ramtide is still trying to keep hope alive. <laughs> The waitress said, That's no excuse. Look, you're coming and you don't have a choice. I will fight you. You don't want to do that. I'm staying home. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Ramtide does end up giving in. These ladies, you know, they got sway over Ramtide. He's lovestruck. I'm a married man and I don't give a shit about the approval of women. <laughs> or men for that matter. People in general. Unless it's in the form of YouTube likes. <laughs> <laughs> a tiny little fist collided with the middle of my chest, and I looked down at the point of impact, unfazed and deadpan, before looking up at the waitress again and shaking my head. No. The bartender chimed in, I should go and stop being such a recluse and hang out with everybody, if for nothing else then at least for this one time. Bartender, this is one of the few times a year that everybody actually gets to be social without having to attend to the business of the restaurant. Ramtide, fine, damn it. I'll go to the fucking party. You guys just stop twisting my arm about it. The waitress, I don't believe you. You're going to weasel out at the last minute. I can already tell because it's written all over your face. Give me your phone number and I'll pick you up. You're totally going, Ramtide. Everyone wants to get drunk with you and hear your road stories so you don't get to bail. Hurry up. I got tables I have to get back to. Boy, I'm liking her less and less. I know Manic Pixie Dream Girl, etc., but <laughs> you tried too hard. You ain't about to tell me how I'm going to spend my holiday. Fuck out of here. <laughs> I'll rip that social contract up and throw it out the window. But I know Ramtide. He has a heart, despite uh, his objections. <laughs> <laughs> At that moment, I almost wished that the waitress had a pair of testicles so I could plant my fist on her nose with complete impunity and absent guilt. <laughs> yeah, you feel the same way I do. Too pushy. However, it's doubtful that any such anatomy ever materialized as the result of a wish, and instead I did my best not to sound spiteful as I gave away my phone number. I was allowing myself to get roped into something for which I legitimately had no fucking interest. <sighs> At least on the bright side, it was bound to chat Bluebeard's ass if I rolled up with the waitress, I mused to myself. See, the revenge plot is still on. <laughs> Ramtide is too spiteful to just let it go like that after a shower conversation. I know it. You can lie to the Neckbeard story subreddit, but you can't lie to me. <laughs> As I stood up, the bartender remarked that I had made a good choice. I remarked that I didn't really seem to have much of a choice at all, and just kind of slunk back towards the sink. My toil awaited me, stacking up almost to the shelf, and I cut my break short before concluding the evening. As I walked home that evening, I checked the calendar on my phone to see just how long I had to find some perfect excuse to avoid the upcoming event in its entirety, and I saw that I had but a week to concoct a plan. My thoughts were broken, however, when I heard a horn bip behind me, and I turned to see a beaten down Subaru had pulled up beside me. The driver window was down, and the waitress craned her head out. The waitress, hey, let me give you a ride home. Ramtide, no, that's okay. I don't really live that far at all. The waitress, you don't have an option. I gotta know where you live in case you try to flake out on me. God, she is fucking annoying, isn't she? <laughs> uh, oh, I can't stand it. At first, I'm like, okay, maybe they could have something going on. But now, no, that's all out the window. How can you hang out with somebody that thinks they can control other people like this? You just say you don't have a choice, and now I don't actually have a choice? 
eat shit. <laughs> I always have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> and Ramtide responds in kind. Oh, fuck you. I don't want to go. It's too many people. I don't want to go to that fucking party, and I don't want to be stuck on that hill all night. The waitress. I wasn't planning to stay up there all night with them. I have something I'm throwing back at my place later. Maybe we don't even have to go up to their party at all. Don't be such a shut-in, Ramtide. Live a little. Come on. I have lived entirely too much. <laughs> I've even got some extra life to go around if you need some. The excitement of new surroundings had already grown dull, and people no longer captured my fancy or imagination. Barely a week. I've noticed it takes less and less time to happen every year, and this week I was setting records. I took one look at that manic pixie girl behind the wheel, and all I saw was a bored little human seeking to feed off of attention. Oof. Fucking called that one out hard. <laughs> The scathing, unrepentant, fluorescent light of realism. <laughs> I did still have to work with her, though. No manic pixie girl or seething little manlet could keep me from my year's goals. I needed money to complete those goals. And I wasn't about to just tuck tail because one coworker was a spiteful balding goblin and the other one wanted to try and fucking socially engineer me. Ooh, maybe she is a little stealth beard. Hmm. <laughs> I couldn't just unload on her and tell her to go fuck herself, delete my number, and never speak to me again. Ugh, social contract. <laughs> there had to be some reputational investment made on my effort to maintain some civility. Ramtide, fine, I'll go. The waitress, do you want to ride home? Ramtide, sure, whatever. And here we see a fucking broken human. <laughs> Your free will has just been stripped away. You've been worn down into nothing by the manic pixie dream girl. Which is usually not how it goes. Usually the protagonist is like, oh yeah, I'm totally down with all of this. Say yes to everything? That's so quirky. <laughs> but life ain't the fucking movies. I really didn't live very far. And I was home in literal moments. Exiting the vehicle and making my way up the drive past Kurt's open door. He was leaning against the frame as he stood on the threshold, watching me as I left the car. The waitress shouted after me, Good night! And he responded by letting out a protracted, Ooh! As I passed him by. I told him to shut his mouth and went inside. Love goes out to Red X and the greater Red X community. Special thanks also goes out to my patrons, Calvicus, Nat1, Nick, Dayton Does, A, that's me, <laughs> Fire Drake, DigiNZ, Luke Mirowski, and Tato Ferret. Hey, Marak is on Ramtide's Patreon too? Killa, killa. Thank you for your love and support as we make our way through this curious adventure known as life. Stories like this make me so fucking grateful for the situation that I am currently in. Basically don't have to answer to nobody except the subscribers and the YouTube algorithm and my patrons. <laughs> I don't have any co-workers like, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that. Eat shit. No, I don't. <laughs> I can stay comfy in my house for as long as I want. It's a beautiful thing. Screw that social contract. Throw it out the window as far as I'm concerned. If they don't understand, then guess what? Those aren't people that I want to be associated with anyways. Although I do understand a job site, but... They can't fire you out of spite. They can't fire you for not going to an after-work function. You know what I mean? They'll just hate you a little bit. So what? I finish fucking washing the dishes and get my money together and move on, as I know Ramtide will do. I'm not here to please anybody except myself. I'm not here to make fucking friends. I'm not going to see you people <laughs> ever again after a few more months. So go sit on it and spin. I don't care. There was definitely a time in my life when I did, but we are so far past that point. <laughs> I'm a husband and a father, and while I do go to social gatherings on occasion, it's with, like, you know, less than five people. Five people is about my maximum, and then if it's any more than that, I just shut down entirely. I don't have anything to say, I just want to leave as soon as possible. And it doesn't get better with age or practice or any of that, so... I just kind of accept it. It is what it is. Social anxiety is here to stay. 
And that's fine with me, I guess. I'm not trying to get in your pants. I really love you. I still love you. Showdown, free for all, Bluebeard finale. Posted one minute ago. Oh, I'm the one that posted this because Ramtide's out in the middle of the desert. <laughs> Red X is the greatest. There, Dayton, I did it for you this time. Hey, man, if I can't plug my own stuff at the very top of your post, then what am I even doing out here, you know? <laughs> if you try to get your stuff off the ground, a little bit of tooting your own horn goes a long way. You gotta get the ball rolling somehow. But I do appreciate you doing it for me this time. <laughs> and Rem Tidings, dear friend, it is I, your dutiful lord and master, the Eternal GM. Where we last parted ways, things were slowly escalating between Bluebeard and myself. His scorn for me was rivaled only by my distaste for him. And he had realized now that it was his duty to let me know for a fact that he did not like me. Escalation and retaliation ensued with an attempt to bridge the widening gap between us. I tried to offer and extend an olive branch of peace, which was summarily rejected. While my commitment to torturing him was waning rapidly, and my desire to plow the waitress even more so, <laughs> it seemed that I had found myself pressured into social contracts. Those goddamn social contracts. <laughs> Which admittedly were only going to fan the flames further. Every fiber of my being cried at me to just try and weasel my way out of it. But propriety found itself demanding observance. I thus committed myself to a night on a lonely hill that 4th of July. Let us not waste any further time on introductions, my friends, and delve directly into this tale lovingly subtitled a stroll in the park oh that sounds pleasant <laughs> i'm sure it won't be not sure what the hell's going on well red x has got the scoop go see if he won't serve you up a plate at the following links and i definitely will serve you up a plate no matter what come on through <laughs> i'm happy to see you and i thank you for those links me boy now it should go without saying at this point particularly if you've been here for a while, that tales of beardism are very seldom wholesome. Uncomfortable topics or disgusting descriptions may arise. You have been warned twice now. Don't feel bad turning off the video if anything gets to be a little much for you. I do got the disclaimer, but I've also taken to saying it within the video with my mouth parts, so now you've been warned three times. <laughs> it's all on you, alright? If you can't eat that banana nut muffin or whatever, I cannot be blamed for that. <laughs> so my vacant gaze stared into the flickering television screen as I mindlessly raised a Cool Ranch corn chip up to my mouth. Oh, Cool Ranch is the best flavor if you're gonna eat Doritos. The crunching sound in my ears still couldn't overpower the subtitled Japanese screams of agony as Saitama blew his opponent to pieces in a single hit. He looked so bored as carnage and viscera rained down about him and I could not help but relate. Gotta love that one punch man. <laughs> it's like so the opposite of what animes try to do, but also it's going over the top with what animes try to do. God damn, it's such a good show. He didn't do the things that he did because he reveled in them. He simply begrudgingly allowed himself to get roped into being one punch man because that was just how the cookie crumbled. To quote that brilliant cartoon man, okay. <laughs> I raised another chip to my mouth only for it to fall onto my chest. I sent a stupefied look down upon my reclined body on that couch. A large, rotund belly hid beneath my corn chip crumb sprinkled t-shirt, and that rotund belly hid my penis. <laughs> Thank you so much for the, the description. <laughs> Why are we doing this? Okay, I'll go along for the ride, I guess. I lazily picked up the fallen chip and brought it back to my mouth. There is no escape, Cool Ranch. <laughs> I had gotten fat since I got off the road. I had grown complacent, domesticated, predictable, 
And now, as the credits to One Punch Man rolled across the screen, I realized just how much I had let myself go. Not only was I letting myself languish physically, but mentally as well. No longer was I the fiery counter to polite society. I was allowing myself to get bullied by others because I wanted a car and a passport, and to realize all of those things, I needed money. And to keep a supply of money coming in, uh, I had to exercise social decorum and observe obligations, which did not in all honesty appeal to me. Ah, uh, these are the exchanges we make for that comfy life, I do suppose. <laughs> I don't mind it too much. I enjoy being pragmatic, but I know that Ramtide does not. <sighs> How the mighty had fallen. Some smart guy said that desires were the root of all human suffering. Well, that along with expectations. I think it was Jesus or whatever, but yeah, that's besides the point. I had let desire chain me to a life which I wasn't certain that I wanted to live. Yeah, the comfort was nice. I had Hot Pockets, and Corn Chips, and Skyrim, and money, and booze, and all sorts of neat stuff that I didn't really need, but a question nagged at me. Nice though all of that may be, was pretending to belong simply so I could buy another box of Magic Boosters really the kind of life that I wanted to live? God damn, this is cutting deep already. The answer for me is yes, I love buying plastic and silicone with my imaginary money <laughs> and living a comfy life, but I am domesticated. I've come to accept that, and more than that, even probably revel in it. But our good Ramtide is a different breed. This would not be permanent. In true mercenary fashion, I came to an agreement with myself. Get what you came for, and move the fuck on. I looked at the clock... The waitress had sent me a text earlier that day, telling me to be ready by early afternoon. Well, that time was soon approaching, and I cleaned myself up and settled in for another round of cartoons when my phone buzzed. She had arrived and was waiting out front. <sighs> I ascended from the couch and headed to the door. Her car idled at the front driveway, and she beamed as her pet project of a person begrudgingly tread towards the vehicle. I opened the passenger door and climbed in. Waitress, Hey Ramtide, are you excited? This party is gonna be so lit, I promise. Ugh, I know a lot of the comments are like, she's not so bad, she's just trying to fix him. <laughs> she's trying to pull him out of his shell. Well, let fucking people who want to be in their shell stay in their shell, that's all I'm saying. I think Ramtide called it correct in the last story where he called her like, a boring person that just wants to be the center of attention, something like that. Ah, she will get no quarter from me, I promise you that. <laughs> Ramtide, ugh, excited? Not really. Can we just get this over with, waitress? She punched the transmission into gear and roared out of the driveway, taking us down the highway towards the National Forest. I rode in silence and stared out the window while she jawed at me about how excited she was for a gathering in the hills. Every now and then I'd muster up a grunt in the affirmative or the negative, and then wistfully return to thinking about my comfortable reclined position, wherein I could steadily grow my prodigious and ever-expanding bulk. Yeah, that's the life. <laughs> Eventually, we pulled over in a parking lot packed with the cars of our co-workers, and we exited the car and began down the trail. It was a mile hike back into the woods to the site wherein our merry kitchen crew had assembled. The festivities had already begun, and loud music blared over a small Bluetooth speaker nudged into the crotch of a tree. <laughs> the waitress and I approached the fire ring, where the others sat in cheap canvas chairs. As we approached, Charlie started up with a loud cry of, There they are! And heads turned. Many warm and pleasantly inebriated faces beamed at us, save for one whose face wrinkled in disgust. I will give you a guess as to who that is. <laughs> as a greeting, Chef pointed over to a cooler that was overflowing with beers, and I went to help myself. If I was stuck here, I might as well drink about it. <laughs> I took my beer and grabbed an open canvas chair, seating myself right beside my sworn rival who was casting stinging glances my way. 
The waitress grabbed a drink for herself and sat beside me and started making small talk with the others seated about the blaze when Bluebeard leaned in and muttered at me from under his breath. Bluebeard, What the hell are you doing here? I thought you said you were gonna stay home. Ramtide, Enjoying the party, bro. Bluebeard, Well, what the hell are you doing with her? Ramtide, Being lucky, I guess. <laughs> Bluebeard, I swear to God, bro, if you do anything with her, I'm going to end you. That is my woman. Oh, God, could you be more pathetic? <laughs> Get over yourself. Even if she was in a relationship with you, she's polyamorous. <laughs> she don't belong to nobody. How about that? But Ramtide doesn't go down that route. <laughs> Instead, he says, please fucking have her, bro. Hurry up and make your move. She's right there. Save me the trouble so I can get a ride from someone and just go home already. I really do not want to be here. <laughs> the response took him aback. He thought about it for a minute before finally fostering a reply, perhaps in an attempt to test my conviction, although also perhaps to try and get underneath my skin. Bluebeard, uh, don't worry. <laughs> By the end of the night, she'll be going home with me. I promise. <laughs> I'll be sure to tell you about all the details at work tomorrow. Uh... Ramtide? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for that, Bluebeard. <laughs> it's good to have a dream, isn't it? <laughs> this boy is so out of his depth. If it hasn't happened in the years that they've worked together, why is tonight suddenly the night? Ah, neckbeards just never lose hope. <laughs> I took another sip off my bottle and watched the flaring coals in the pit. It did not take long for Bluebeard to pounce. A lull in the conversation left a lingering silence about the fire. Bluebeard circled in on his prey like he would circle a pile of Hot Pockets fresh from the oven. He stood up from his chair and moved over to the waitress, squatting down beside her, and personally made his bold advance. Let's see how it goes for him, Johnny. <laughs> Bluebeard, hey waitress, uh, I don't know if you've been up in these hills much, but there are some really cool spots in the woods. Uh, I was wondering if maybe you wanted to go on a hike with me. I could show you some really cool stuff back here. I hike around here all the time. <laughs> yeah, cool stuff. Like this chloroform and this bag of zip ties. <laughs> uh, do not go alone on a hike with a beardo. That's like rule one. I imagined what cool things he had to show her. Rock formations, mineral specimens... Wild edibles, creeks and ravines, sticks and stumps, but most probably his dick. <laughs> the classic ploy was in place, and he had decided to spring the trap, get her alone somewhere secluded, and wax romantic enough to win her hand once and for all. It was so transparent to the entirety of the world that it just might work. I remained silent, sincerely wishing him success, the good lord knew that that boy desperately needed to get fucking laid. <laughs> it would give him a recent success upon which he could cling for once, and it might mellow him out and put all the animosity that was directed at me to rest. I could make my money in peace and meet my own goals, only condemned to listen to his stupid stories. Oh, and he would tell you about this one a whole lot. <laughs> I don't think that this is the magic bullet to put Bluebeard down, but all right, we'll go with it, I guess. <laughs> the needless rivalry between us could perhaps be buried. Please, God, hear my prayer and let her say yes. Go into the woods with him, waitress. Let a miracle happen for the betterment of us all and emerge a happy couple content in each other's company. I can hear those wedding bells are ringing. <laughs> do you think it happened? Well, neither do I, but it turns out that I'm always fucking wrong because <laughs> the waitress says, that actually sounds like a lot of fun. 
Hey, Ramtide, do you want to go on a hike with us? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Ramtide, not really. The waitress, come on, it'll be fun. I know you like the woods. You talk about how much time you spend in the forest a lot. Let's go explore it. I don't know if you've been up here in the hills before, but a lot of people tell me that they're pretty neat. Come on, Bluebeard can be our guide. He says he knows this place like the back of his hand. Uh, no, <laughs> and no again. But we all know that the waitress doesn't exactly know what no means. To her, it's just convince me. <laughs> Try harder to convince me. Ugh. I looked up from my cold beverage and over at Bluebeard, who was absolutely seething at this point, trying and failing miserably to hide that fact. I empathized for just a moment with that squat little creature, his eyes nearly bugging out of his head at this curveball that had just been thrown his way. <laughs> his plan was summarily foiled. How could he flirt with a woman if he wasn't alone with her? Well, I don't know. You just kind of flirt with her, dude, but... <laughs> Yeah, that's totally stupid. Apparently, that wasn't how the cookie of his affections were going to crumble. I carefully weighed my options. His insecurities prevented him from making moves in front of the entire cadre of the crew. I could facilitate them being alone in the forest together and leave their budding romance to bloom all on its own. Just walk with them, Ramtide and then quietly disappear when the opportunity presents itself. <laughs> Wingman for him, and you'll never have to deal with this again. Oh man, another dude trying to wingman for neckbeards. <laughs> it never goes well, dude. The last time we saw this in the Guitar Beard Saga, somebody got punched in the mouth. <laughs> Please, don't let it happen. I tried to telepathically convey my thoughts to the bug-eyed Bluebeard beside me, psychically screaming into the void that by the end of the day, her hand he would take before fostering my reply. All right, I'll go. Us three arose from our seats, and I cast a pleading glance <laughs> to the others around the fire pit, asking if anyone else wanted to come in my final gambit to try and pry myself loose. They were all content, however, to just linger by the fire, and so I accepted fate and wandered as a part of that doom triad into the winding mountain trails of the forest. Bluebeard had taken the lead, with the waitress behind, and myself begrudgingly bringing up the back, looking for my opportunity upon which to duck out and leave them both behind. I mean, walking at the back, that should be pretty easy. <laughs> you just kind of lag and lag a little more, and then you hide behind a tree, <laughs> and you're gone. <laughs> we walked for maybe an hour and a half before a realization dawned on me. We had been walking in circles. Bluebeard kept assuring the waitress that oh, what he wanted to show her lay just up ahead. And she had taken to complaining at this point, demanding to just know what it was that was so important. What it was that he had to show her. <laughs> I rolled my eyes. Wondering how not one, but two, get lost on a highly developed foot trail barely two miles out from the campground. No, come on, Ramtide. Bluebeard said he knows the trail like the back of his hand. <laughs> Surely he has some grander plan in mind. This obese little goblin running around in the woods. It's like his natural environment or something, isn't it? <laughs> the waitress. Where are we even going, Bluebeard? He said this wouldn't take long. It's been like two hours. Bluebeard, it's okay. We, we just got turned around is all. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm an expert navigator. <laughs> I practically live in these woods. <laughs> <laughs> Called it. Uh, and even if I did it, I'd still get us back into one piece. <laughs> and don't worry, we'll, we'll get there and you'll love it. We just got turned around is all. Ramtide, bro, we're on a trail loop. We are going in circles. Bluebeard, no we're not, Ramtide. I walk up here all the time. Have you ever even been up here before? Ramtide, no, I haven't, Bluebeard. However, we've passed that seep with the dead logs in it at this same fork in the road twice now. We're on a loop, man. 
If we go left instead of right, then we'll be off the loop and back onto the trail, and then we can go back to camp or further into the woods. Whichever, it doesn't really matter to me that much, but at least let's stop walking in fucking circles. Come on, the waitress. Oh my god, do you even know where you're going, Bluebeard? You said you knew these woods. You said you lived in them like a creepy little goblin. <laughs> Bluebeard insisted on his forestry skills. Yes, indeed. <laughs> he reminds me a lot of Bowlerbeard at this moment. And I took a seat on a rock. He insisted that we keep pressing onwards. I remarked that I was going to sit right where I was and I would see them again in maybe 20 minutes. He scoffed and told me to enjoy spending the night in the woods alone before telling the waitress to come on and follow him. The waitress, you're not coming with us, Ramtide? Ramtide, fuck no. I didn't even want to come to this party. I didn't want to go on this hike. Now we're walking in circles. He doesn't want to admit it because he wants to impress you. Hell, he didn't even want me to come along because he's too much of a coward to put the moves on you in front of other people. You're lucky I'm here, because you guys will just end up doing the fucking loop-de-loop -loop all night, and not in a fun way. <laughs> I'm not going to keep walking in circles, alright? I'm going to sit right here, and I will see you all again in approximately 20 minutes. Bluebeard scoffed and replied, What? You think I want to impress her? Why the hell would I want to do that? I could get hot chicks anytime I want. <laughs> Uh, yeah, nobody's buying that one. <laughs> I don't need to waggle my peen to prove that I'm hot shit. Whatever. Have fun sitting in the woods all night, Ramtide. You're totally wrong, dude. Come on, waitress. We're almost there. The waitress cast a pleading glance at me to just get up and keep walking with them, like a puppy begging for a strip of bacon. I shook my head. My feet were firmly rooted. My eyes flared with accusatory rage, screaming, You brought me into this, but I am not going to play anymore. Enjoy your fucking date night. <laughs> she sighed, turned, and followed Bluebeard into those woods. Blessed silence and solitude ensued. Ah, <sighs> for once. <laughs> Drink it in. I cherished every moment of inner peace I found as I waited at that small trail fork. The sun was sinking lower in the sky. It eventually disappeared behind the mountains, and the sky turned purple, and that characteristic highland chill settled in for the evening. I started a little campfire right there at the fork to try and chase it off while I waited. It had been about 20 minutes or so when, sure enough, <laughs> I heard a familiar voice shouting from the opposite end of the trail. I quickly snuffed my tiny little fire and tucked into the woods behind a tree. I peered through the shadows and could make out the silhouettes of my former companions trudging up the path in the dark. They had descended into a heated argument. <laughs> yeah, just give Bluebeard enough rope to hang himself. I thought Ramtai was going to jump out and scare him or some shit, but... <laughs> it's much more fun to just sit back and watch the fireworks, isn't it? The waitress... Where even are we? Are we lost? I can't believe you got us lost just so you could come out here and ask me on a stupid date. How many times have we been over this since we started working together, Bluebeard? This is like the hundredth time that you've done something stupid to try and get in my pants. And I am not fucking interested in you, Bluebeard. I'm not trying to get in your pants. I really love you. <laughs> uh... Beautiful. We're perfect for each other. <laughs> I can't get through it. Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> We're perfect for each other, waitress. Why can't you see that? I thought I could show you how much you meant to me. <laughs> it's so pathetic. I mean, again, I do feel bad for Bluebeard, but... One, he's picking on Ramtide, trying to lay claim to this woman who's clearly not interested in him. And two, he keeps harassing this woman who is clearly not interested in him. 
If he was just a regular dude down on his luck, I would have all the sympathy in the world for him. But no, he's a neckbeard through and through. The waitress, show me how much I meant to you by getting me lost in the woods with you. If we were so perfect for each other, you wouldn't have to get me lost in the forest just to ask me out so I can shoot you down all over again. I'm so sick of this shit. Every day, it's some new fucking cry for attention. I figured maybe if I act like I was interested in someone else, you'd get the fucking message. But no, you can't leave me alone. Every other fucking week, it's something new. I don't even like Ramtide. I don't even find him attractive. Frankly, I think he's fucking disgusting. <laughs> uh, well, that cuts deep. <laughs> But he's stupid and desperate enough to get in your way. I just need a goddamn wall to stand between me and you for the rest of our natural fucking lives. The best laid plans of mice and men <laughs> are doomed to fail. Bluebeard, don't lie to me. I can see how you look at him. You want him. You're obsessed with him. You've got nothing but googly eyes for that guy. Waitress, if I have to act like I want him to put him in your way, then I'm going to act like I fucking want him to put him in your way. Apparently that failed too, and he's left me out here. And now I'm going to be stuck in these freezing ass woods all night with you. Bluebeard, well, we could cuddle. <laughs> I'm dying. <sighs> we could cuddle to keep warm until the sun rises. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can get out of here. Bro. Oh, he's just not taking the hint, is he? <laughs> it's not even a hint at this point. It is a front and back 12-page essay, and he's still like, yeah, I don't understand what this means. <laughs> a sharp slap echoed through the tree lines. Ooh. And the defeated sobs of Bluebeard begin to rise up like a banshee's wail from the forests. A question burned in my mind. Who was in the wrong here? <laughs> a dejected and lonely man was smitten by his one-itis and couldn't get it through his thick skull that no meant no and she was genuinely not interested in his offer, now or ever. She wanted nothing to do with him, tugging at the heartstrings of new arrivals, using others whom she could drag along and imposing them in his path as a foil to his amorous advances. I had almost let myself get suckered into it, drawn in by the seeming promise of getting lucky, pitted against a lonely man desperately clinging to the hopes of finding love, and even for a moment I found myself reveling in the potential injury that I could inflict upon him. <sighs> the truth is... Nobody won here. The only winning move was not to fucking play, and we had all lost. Ain't that the truth, man? Things are never really black and white. <laughs> it's all just different shades of gray, especially in Ramtide stories. But this one might have been the grayest one of them all. I don't know who I dislike the most. <laughs> <laughs> the waitress's legbeard mask came right off, and now she's revealed as essentially a beard herself. Huh. I'm gonna have to ponder on that for a bit. I turned from my tree and started to walk back down to base camp, haunted by the wails of, This is just like high school. Why does everybody hate me? <laughs> oh, God. It was a 15-minute hike before I exited the trailhead, alone, at the base camp. The fire pit was still alight, and everyone was more drunk and belligerent than before. As I approached the fire, Chef asked where the others were, and I made a joke about murdering them and leaving them for dead in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> then I broke clean and told him that Bluebeard had led us on a long circle around a trail loop for about an hour and a half, busily seeking a moment to confess his undying love to the waitress. I decided to say screw it, and came back here alone. Ramtide, you can find the others real easy if you want. Just go up the trail, and when you reach the first fork, you just stand there for about another 20 minutes. <laughs> 
I'm practically 100% sure that they will inevitably walk in yet another circle and wind up back there. The waitress doesn't know her way around the woods, and Bluebeard is convinced that he has to lead her out to prove his worth. <laughs> Something tells me that even though I had expressly told them how to get back to base camp, he is far too stubborn to possibly even consider admitting that I was right in front of her. They'll be stuck on that loop for hours. They'll turn up, believe me, or don't believe me. At this point, it's literally not my problem. Leave them all up there for all I care. I'm done. What'd you make for dinner, chef? <laughs> Oh, what a pair. <laughs> yeah, I think the best thing to do is just exit post haste. Now Ramtide can see it for what it truly is, and the only real answer is not to play. GTFO. <laughs> Epilogue. I spent the rest of the night by the fire pit. Apparently, the shenanigans of these two were nothing novel to an overwhelming preponderance of the crew. Bluebeard and the waitress had a long history with each other over the course of several years at that restaurant. Bluebeard, always enchanted by his love, would challenge every new man who arrived to a test of dominance, trying to scare people away from interacting with his beloved in any capacity. The waitress would make a point to try and impose new arrivals between herself and and the amorous garmagey by any means necessary. I just happened to be the newest arrival, and it was like a standardized process of hazing for the new guy. <laughs> Each newbie had to learn this valuable lesson. Bluebeard was lonely, and the waitress was a sly charmer, and my arrival would thrust me between them whether I liked that or not. The rite of initiation was officially over now, and I was finally off the hook. They were doomed to battle over love unrequited without me being there to assume the role of Fall Guy. With this revelation at last clarified to me, I put my beer down and thoughtfully asked if perhaps we ought to go get him down from the hill and bring him back to camp. Chef remarked that he had been getting tired of this shit for a while now, and he figured that a night up on the hill would be enough to get it out of their systems for good. <laughs> That's harsh. He issued a decree to his kitchen crew, forbidding anyone from going up there until the morning. Oh, <laughs> Chef, that's hardcore. Chef, in fact, actually knew the trails and remarked that there was barely any decent run of woods back there upon which they could actually get lost. In all honesty, he was rather confounded that they'd get stuck on the loop in the first place. And so they would spend the night cold and miserable in each other's company which was also cold, I do think. <laughs> and he whispered a silent prayer that both of them would learn their lesson and they would never feel that they had to put another newbie through a similar gauntlet. No, they could sit on that fucking hill until the morning. Since my ride home from the party was stuck in the woods with her dashing white knight, <laughs> I spent the evening up there at the campsite. I was offered an extra blanket from one of my coworkers and I slept next to the fire pit. I arose the following morning to see Charlie and Jerome leading the waitress and Bluebeard out of the woods. <laughs> Bluebeard was sullen, and his eyes were bloodshot. He had definitely been crying, and the waitress prickled like a porcupine. Both of them were shuddering from the morning cold, and there were deep, dark circles beneath their eyes. They must have kept walking for a good while back there in the woods, trying to find their way out because both of them were limping. I got up from beneath my blanket and cheerily wished them both a good morning. <laughs> Bluebeard stayed catatonic, and the waitress exuded nothing but scorn at my salutations. Neither of them fostered me a response. <laughs> the waitress left in a flurry. She did not wish anyone goodbye. She simply disappeared down the trail to the parking lot and drove the fuck away. Bluebeard, somber and solemn, sat alone by the fire, warming up slowly, staring a thousand yards into the embers. His unrequited love was going to remain quite unrequited, and whatever masterful proposal he had mustered up the courage to make to his beloved last night was summarily rejected. I sidled into a chair beside him by the campfire and placed a hand on his shoulder. 
remarking that I understood, that I forgave him, and that I hoped that we could both live this one down. Time sailed by. Bluebeard never bothered me at work again. While we never actually became anything close to even an approximation of friends, we were at least able to coexist side by side in a civil manner. Every now and then I'd rib him about the waitress or his high school obsession, and he would call me a filthy scumbag who belonged in the gutter, but <laughs> it wasn't vicious. It was all in good fun. The waitress quit maybe a month later and moved on to another job. During her remaining time there, she avoided the back of the house staff like the plague. I stayed at that restaurant for almost a year before moving on without further incident. I wonder if she quit because she was, like, ashamed. Now her plans were laid bare in the daylight and she couldn't stand the thought of everybody knowing. Or perhaps she just finally let Bluebeard run her off. I guess it's better for everybody involved that she is gone. I'm still not a fan of Bluebeard, but uh, the waitress ain't that great either. I'm sure they are much better now that they're separate. And so that concludes this particular tale. I shall return in the not too distant future. I've heard murmurings of a growing demand for closure regarding a much beloved friend in a story long since past. Oop, I spoiled it. <laughs> God, I suck. I shall be back soon enough to tell that tale, along with many others. Much love goes out to Red X and the greater Red X community, and as always, I would like to thank my beautiful patrons, Gigglebot, Latin, Mr. J, Tenton Turd, <laughs> Murek, Nat One Nick, Tato Ferret, Fire Drake, Dayton Does, Hey, that's me, Calvicus, and DigiNZ. Thank you for your love and support as we make our way through this curious adventure that we call life. If you have the inclination to support me as I write you my neckbeard memoirs or work on the creation of a nautical tabletop RPG, you can support me at patreon.com slash black flag printing press. Till next time, friends. Whew, what a wild ride indeed. Many twists and turns were had, <laughs> were they not? At first it's like, oh, I think Ramtide's the bad guy because he's trying to take a run at this chick just to hurt Bluebeard. But it turns out that the chick has been purposely hurting Bluebeard all along. And of course, Bluebeard himself can't take no for an answer, just continually making advances that are spurned for years, years at a time. And that gives me no doubt that this dude is fucking most definitely a neckbeard. Holy crap, how do you have patience like that? I think it's pretty silly that Ramtide dropped uh, the term one-itis, which is totally an incel term, by the way. <laughs> but it definitely does qualify in this case. Part of me wishes that it might have worked out for Bluebeard and everybody could have been a big happy family, but that would really just be rewarding his bad behavior, wouldn't it? I don't actually want that. I'm glad he somewhat learned to coexist. I'm glad the waitress moved on to... Hopefully bigger and better things, and hopefully Bluebeard was able to move on too. Ramtide, we know that boy's gonna move on. He's like a rolling stone. <laughs> Can't sit still for too long at all, but luckily I got him slaving away even while he's on the road writing stories for the enjoyment of all of us. So big, big love for that boy, as always. And big, big love to you, friends, for watching the video this far. I do hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe. If you did enjoy it, that is always appreciated. Share the video around if you should like. That is always, always appreciated. Also, check out them links in the description. Yes, indeed, all kinds of plugs. Teespring, if you're trying to rock the merch. Mr. and Mrs. Red X, which is mine and my wifey's vlog channel. We also got my Amazon affiliate link. Yes, indeed. If you're going to buy something on Amazon and you buy it through there, I get kicked back a little bit of your purchase, which is pretty cool. I think there's some other stuff down there, but yeah, dig through it as you please. <laughs> We also got playlists if you're looking for a bit of a different flavor from the channel. And of course my social medias, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, yes, come on through. Say hello to me, I would appreciate it. We've also got Patreon. Oh, and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I would like to thank them all as I do every video. So thank you very much. Robert Waits, Baron Von Waggy Pants, River, TSM Kirby, USMC, Aaron W, Twisted Child, Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Cinema Susie, Fat Boy Shrimp, Fire Drake, Gigglebot, Latin, Libison, Mr. Anime Man Fan, Murek, Silent Revolver, Zero MMX, Magdalene Marshall, Thornrose, Captain Clown Show, Cherish Kitsune, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Rouse Tower, Satori, Anunnaki, Babsy Coon, Caustic Fox, Dinosaur Nightlight, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Fisher Diggy, 
Mikey, Gypsy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, a pimp named Jay Crisp, JM Coon, Jerry, John Hero, Simbufa, cause if you boof it is free. <laughs> Miss Monday, Lexi loves JoJo, Lord Lionel, Lori Ellis, Jack is Rule, Melgar the Destroyer, Mr. J, Mirthful Baker, my boy, Nat One Nick, Lady Nix, or Gamey Steve, Phantom of the Pines, Katekins, Elizabeth, Sidestep, Puggy, Cider Drinker, Serrated Ass, Siegfried, Staples, Yeet, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tapioca, Boogaloo, Tato Fair, Tadida Police, That Duck and Bug, The One True Fusky, Treeberg, Will Max, Zero Blacktail, Kira M, Kitsikin, Redwin, Goose Says Honk, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, Saints Blessing, John Indoors, A Normal Joe, Ammer, A Roxers, Babushka's a Radiant Jam, and Cake Jerry! That's a different Jerry! <laughs> <laughs> the Jerry's are getting so far apart now. Uh, California Keto Girl, Chris Mesca, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, Defawn, Ghost of Alpha, KJW, Kajow, Crafty Kitty Cat, Life of a Guardian, Little Ann Woods, Mark 211, Maybe Next Time, Milk Fed Gimp, Ms. Duchess, Or Game of Cam, Princess Rosalie, Raptor Art, Spoonie the Rogue, Steampunk Ellie, The Last Shinobi, and the Necro Babacon. Whoo! Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel in the way that you do. What a list! I will definitely say that as soon as some of that Patreon money comes through, I'm going to get Robulus D to help me write this up as a song or something like that. Because I think that shit was slap. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Obviously, I do hope that some other people will consider signing up on the Patreon. But if you can't do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some more Red X videos. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one, and until then, bye-bye.